the ABC News contributor and author of The Queen, A Life in Pictures, Victoria Murphy is with us. Victoria, this is a major development as Andrew loses his title of His Royal Highness. You know, this was the son known as the Queen's favorite. I mean, what a turn of events, unprecedented. Hi there, good morning, Kerry. Yes, a very significant development, as you say, because this is really spelling out that there is absolutely no going back for Prince Andrew. There's no way now that he can return to public duties. And this is further than the palace have gone in the past on this subject. When he stepped back in 2019, the door was still left open and he still did have his military affiliations and those have now been completely taken away from him. A lot of people felt that it was very important that this step was taken because there had been mounting pressure on the palace to remove those military roles. We had letters from veterans being sent. We had members of the military speaking out saying that they felt uncomfortable raising a glass to him. So there was increasing pressure on Buckingham Palace to deal with that. They've also said that he will not be able to use his, his Royal Highness title and really spelled it out there that they now see him as a private citizen, completely cut him loose as he prepares to now fight this legal battle on his own moving forward. Now, are they doing this just because of the the image and, and, and what it portrays? Or is it possible that the Queen has in information that we just don't know about, that she has been told something uh, that is pushing her to make such a dramatic move? Well, that's a, a very interesting question. I mean, we wouldn't presume to know exactly what the Queen knows or thinks on this. I think fundamentally, the royal family is acutely aware of how damaging these allegations have been. And I think the timing of this statement coming just after Judge Lewis Kaplan had said that he's not going to dismiss the case, we now know that it's going to continue to play out very prominently over the course of the next year. This is the Queen's Platinum Jubilee year. And this is the biggest royal story in town. This is what is dominating the headlines over here and around the world. And the royal family clearly felt that they needed to do something additional to put as much distance as possible between them and Prince Andrew. He has repeatedly protested his innocence and he has said a source close to him said yesterday that he will continue to defend himself against these allegations. So he clearly has every intention of trying very much to clear his name. Not being able to call, be called your royal highness, stripped of his military titles. What are the larger implications of all of this, you think, Victoria? Well, I think fundamentally this has the ability to still very much impact the monarchy. You know, they have taken away pretty much now absolutely everything they can. He does still live in the grounds of Windsor Castle. That is something that could potentially change. But they have now removed everything officially from him, even more than they had done previously. But really, he is still the Queen's son. And while she remains on the throne, as you said, he's been referred to many times in the past as her favourite son. That link is very strong. And it, it's I think the royal family would be very naive to think that just because they've taken away all of the official labels and the official associations that this is no longer going to impact them moving forward. Of course it is. This is going to have a big impact on the monarchy and, and how people see the institution because he is the Queen's son. So what happens next for Prince Andrew? Well, for Prince Andrew, of course, this case is now going to continue. We're going to see the process unfold. There's depositions that can be taken under oath, evidence that can be sought. And we are looking towards a trial. That is, of course, unless a settlement agreement is agreed first or unless on the outside chance the case is dismissed for a different reason. But a lot of people are saying a settlement agreement is what Andrew would like. That would be his preferred option. It would avoid a trial. However, when you look at what both sides are saying, it's actually quite difficult to see how an agreement can be reached because he is saying, sources close to him are saying he will defend himself. And Virginia Dubrazeroy was on the BBC not long ago saying that he didn't think that she would accept a purely financial settlement and that any resolution for her would have to vindicate her claim. And on the face of it, it's very hard to see how those two things can come together for a settlement agreement. So we could be heading towards a trial. And of course, all of the information that goes into the public domain over the course of the trial, regardless if who wins, can be very damaging. Victoria Murphy, appreciate your perspective this morning. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.